Hey y'all, Bunkle here again. Uh, if this is your first time on the channel or catching one of my videos, I definitely appreciate you being here. If you're a subscriber, you've seen some of my videos before, I, I definitely appreciate you coming back and checking out more. Hope you've been having a great day. Hope that you've been having a blessed day. Today's been a real good one to me. Uh, again, in my opinion, I think every day is a good day. Sure, some bad things might happen. There's pluses, minuses, ups, downs. As, you know what? As we all know, just over the past years, there could be interesting stuff or real boring stuff. You know what? It's all God's work, all God's plan. Anyway, back on this right now. Um, what I'm going to be doing in this video are three packs of Fleer 92 Ultra. There's two packs, and these are Ultra Baseball. There's two packs of Series 1 and one pack of Series 2. Now, of course, there's uh, potential for Hall of Famers, uh, superstars and stars of the day. As far as rookies in this set, there really aren't any. Uh, nothing really to write home about. Uh, not that I'm aware, but star cards, absolutely. Now, in Series 2... They did have an insert set, which was All-Stars. Uh, if you're looking at PSA stuff, the All-Stars uh, definitely have some value. And those were inserted in, I think, one in every 15 packs or something like that, Series 2. Um, outside of that, uh, not really much of any significance. Uh, if you go down like TCDB or any of that, um, as far as the rookie list, uh, outside of the Scott Brocious. And Scott Brocious, he was a good player, uh, Definitely with the Yankees, he was uh, definitely a key to their mid-90s uh, winning and I, I guess somewhat of a quick temporary dynasty. He was definitely a cog in the machine. Was he uh, a superstar there? No, but, you know, to me, he was uh, he was part of what made the Yankees teams of those years great. You didn't have really a lot of big head superstars. You had a lot of what would be considered blue-collar type rough players. Sure, you had, uh, in the mid-90s, you had Jeter, of course, and he ended up being a superstar, uh, but home raised superstar. Then after that, you had, of course, A-Rod brought in, uh, imported in, uh, a couple other players. But what they did is they really put together just a team of, uh, of all-stars, um, which weren't Hall of Famers, but they were definitely good quality players. I mean, sure, you had Knobloch, Brocious, uh, Tino Martinez, and then replaced by Giambi. Uh, so you did have your, 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 I guess, great players of the day, but were they all future Hall of Famers? Were they all that? Nah, not, definitely not. And the pitching staff was definitely something to be, to, to be reckoned with. Uh, they had a great pitching staff back then also. Anyway, let's get to opening. Now, these tinfoil wrappers can be a little bit tough to open cleanly, so I got the handy dandy knife ready. So I want to get those out nice and cleanly. Uh, don't want to do any damage to these. Again, if you're, if you're thinking about getting any of these graded, uh, PSA 10 values on these are not all that high. They're beautiful cards. That's one thing. Uh, but the highest priced card of this set, again, if you're thinking about the All-Stars, those tend to be priced higher, but they're harder to find. Highest price PSA is 71 bucks, and that's for a Sandburg. Uh, after that, you have three or four other cards that might be worth the value of getting graded. Uh, but nothing really much past that. Um, so anyway, we'll get moving with these. Again, there's three packs, two of Series 1, one of Series 2. We have Mike Sharpperson, Paul O'Neill, talking about those great mid-'90s Yankees teams. He was an all-star and a great player. Not Hall of Fame numbers, but an all-around, again, that blue-collar type player that uh, you, in my mind, you really want to have fill up your team. Uh, they're they're team players as opposed to just i am the superstar i am the st the straw that stirs the drink uh reggie that's that's a reggie quote of course i'm sure he's one of the things that made the 70s yankees great but you can't you can't not think about the other players that were around him um of course he said that in reference to munson who was a great catcher but i would say without greg nettles without bucky dent without willie randolph um without your other players that, that that were there your pitchers Gidry uh Gossage uh Sparky Lyle just to name a few without that I mean he would have just been who knows and the Yankees would not have been the Yankees so nice Paul O'Neill card there me just blabbering along here all right this is what the back of those cards look like this is Greg Olson by the way I didn't mention him 
And these cards, because of the paper, uh, it, it's Kodak photo paper, if I'm not mistaken, or something similar. Uh, they do tend to brick up and get sticky. So we've got Jeff Russell, Greg Briley, Roberto Alomar. All right, nice hit there. I'll keep that on the side, the Frapper. Jeff Asenmaker, Asenmacher, Al Osuna, Daryl Boston. We got a checklist. Woohoo! Real happy to get a checklist. Dave Valley. I mean, maybe if I hold on to that checklist for 150 years, it'll be worth something. For some reason, I doubt I'll be around in 150 years, but you never know. All right, Frank Thomas, that's a nice one. I'll definitely frapper that one. Got Manowaring, Kurt Manowaring, and Milt Thompson. All right, so not a bad pack. Uh, not the best one, of course. But then again, if, you, if you're looking for cards that have major resale value, this is not the set for you. Uh, this is much more of a collector's set, I guess. Um, and these, of course, coming out during the junk wax era. Uh, there were millions and millions and millions of these cards printed, so they weren't hard to find. Um, if you collected for the photography or if you bought cards for the photography and all of that, you'd buy these if you bought cards. And they, they were talking about future value of these cards and everything. And uh, just, again, another lesson, and you never know what may have future value. I do know that the FLIR from the regular FLIR, the standard issue FLIR from 92, seems to have held its value better than the Ultra. I mean, y'all could correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway. We got Trevor Wilson. There you go, Don Mattingly. Not a Hall of Famer, but to me, absolutely a great player. I'll keep him on the side. And there we go with a Hall of Famer card. Paul Molitor. Got Cecil Fielder. Lance Johnson. Cheeto Martinez. Roger Clemens. Rocket Roger there. Great card to find. I'll take that one every day. I mean, it's debatable to some people because he got caught up in the whole P, uh, whatever, the the steroids or whatever else uh, of that time. But um, to me, phenomenal pitcher. Great pitcher. Got Joel Johnson. Brian Harper. Mike Gallego. Ricky Jordan. Jose Offerman. And Barry Larkin. All right, so this is a Hall of Famer pack, absolutely. Let me take a few seconds and frapper those up. I mean, Barry Larkin does not get the respect he deserves as a player. He's definitely, definitely a great player. Constant all-star, perennial threat. Uh, Rocket Roger there. Again, great pitcher, phenomenal pitcher. Whether he was uh, using or not or when or any of that, uh, you know what? I, I hate to say it was a sign of the times, but it was a sign of the times. And uh, being that coaches and managers and uh, just everybody overlooked and didn't care. Uh, they were more thinking about revenue and all of that other stuff. Uh, they wanted to see great pitchers, great batters, great all of that. Of course, after that, you had the strike, uh, which there were a lot of terms and everything else renegotiated. So... Either way, all right, we're going to get to the Series 2. Now, we're looking for any of the All-Star cards in this pack. Don't know if we'll find any, of course. They were one in, I think, every 15 packs or so. This one seems a bit tighter wrapped than the other ones. So I'm going to have to pull that apart there. Hope I don't do any damage to anything in there. Now, again, you have the photography on the front, but the back of the cards were also real nice. I mean, multiple photos, high color, high gloss. These were definitely a step up. I mean, they were trying to compete with Donruss, who had a set, who had sets like this, the top stadium clubs. I mean, everybody started to put out uh, better quality cards at this time. Now, speaking about better quality, I'm glad that's not a superstar player or anything like that. I hope I didn't do the damage to that card, but that's very, very bent up corners. And the second card does not look bad, so that's good. We got Glenn Allen Hill, Lee Stevens, Franklin Stubbs, Mike Henneman, Andre Dawson, nice card there. 
Looks like he just smacked one out. Got Scott Sanderson, Bill Pakoda, Yvonne Calderon, Jacob Brumfield, Jeff King, Mike Huff. A couple cards stuck there. Kent Merker and Casey Candiale. So all in all, not the best break, not the worst. There were definitely some stars and future Hall of Famers pulled out of these. Um, card that we'd be looking for, well, I don't really know if there's much of a card that we'd be looking for. I'm happy to find what we found. I mean, there's not much really to be said about this. It would have been nice to have pulled an all-star card, but you can't win them all, right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, make sure you comment, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell button, ding, all that good stuff. Anyway, y'all take care of yourselves. Bunkle out. Stay blessed.